Hey my darlings, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Denise Mejia or Simply Denise and I welcome you here. Today we're going to be unboxing the BoxyCharm regular subscription box for March and I'm going to be kind of just doing like a little get ready with me, a little try on with the things that we can actually use and then just a little chit chat with you about the things going on in this world. There's so much going on and I kind of just need, I feel the need to talk to you and to vent a little and to just spill my thoughts about it. So if you're into it and you just kind of want to relax and sit down and just talk <laughs> or listen, then keep on watching. Okay, so I think that I'm just going to go through the items first and kind of tell you what is on the box and how much they cost and a little bit about the products and then whatever we can use on the face, we're going to use on the face. There's a lot of stuff that is not makeup, so that's why <laughs> I'm not going to be able to try it on all right now. I'm just going to do first impressions of the makeup products that are in here and talk a little bit after that. So the first item, well, I must say, first of all, I think I had mentioned this before because BoxyCharm did this, uh, I think this past month, they stopped sending the little card. The last time that they did that, they sent it through email before I got the box. So you kind of already knew what was in the box by the time you got it. But this time they didn't do that. So I was expecting to get an email from them like after the box was already here, but I didn't get that either. So I kind of just had to go back to the BoxyCharm website, but I'm just gonna go through the product and the pricing. And if it's something interesting, then I'll tell you about it. But if it's not, we're just gonna skip through it. So the first thing, starting from the biggest thing that they sent out is this ceramic iron. This is actually kind of cool. I haven't opened it, but I, it had been a while since they sent out something this big. And I don't normally curl my hair because obviously I, <laughs> I have curly hair, but I am interested in trying this. So this is a uh, 19 millimeter, yeah, 19 millimeter uh, ceramic iron. And it says it has a cool tip. I'm not gonna try it, but I wanna show you what it looks like. And if any of you guys have tried mini uh, irons like this, mini curling irons, let me know. But I think this could be kind of really cute. See, this is kind of like the size of the hand too. This could be really cute for like, I don't know, like I think little wavy curls like this. I'm, I have a feeling that since it's very small, it's gonna give curls about this size. So we'll see, whenever I strain my hair and I wanna do a little test, I'll film it for you. Make sure that you're following me on Instagram and on Facebook. Insta, Facebook, and Twitter are all uh, Simply Denise, so make sure to find me there so that you can find out how well that works. They also sent out this. This is the one that I am most excited about, if you can focus. Okay, so this is the product that I am most excited about. This is the exact same cleanser from Pharmacy that I use, except it's in a cherry version. So um, this cleanser is a whole lot bigger than the other one. Let me go bring the other one so we can compare. Okay, so this is the one that I have been using for quite a long time. I know that I've talked about it in every, pretty much every skincare video that I do for you guys. And I had told you in the last one, if you haven't seen my bedtime routine, the latest one from this year, I'm gonna link it up here for you. Up here, up here, wherever. I'm gonna link it somewhere up here and I'll link it in the description box as well. But I had told you that I was already running really low on this one because I use it a lot, especially when I have heavy makeup on. And this is um, 1.7 fluid ounces. It also came in BoxyCharm last year and it's lasting me about a year. I know it was at the beginning of the year that we received it. This one is a 3.4 fluid ounce. So from 1.7 to 3.4, you're talking about pretty much the, uh, twice as much. This is also a limited edition and I think this was also made, yeah, made exclusively for BoxyCharm. So I don't think that they sell this on their website. Not too sure, I haven't checked. But I'm so excited because if that lasted me a year and I love that product, I know that this is gonna last me such a long time. I'm not the biggest fan of cherry to be honest with you, but I mean, I'm not gonna eat it. So I'm, I'm fine with the smell. So that very cherry cleansing balm is $34 uh, from pharmacy. The next thing that came up, let me look up the pricing. I think this was 20 bucks, but this is um, just a tweezer. It's a little tweezer with an interesting handle here. Let me... There you go. This is called. This is from a brand called Chella. I have never heard of them, to be honest with you. Um, but these tweezers are um, twenty dollars for these tweezers, and let's try them out. I just tweezed out my eyebrows like yesterday or two days ago, but but let's see how these handles feel because this is actually what I feel is going to be the most uncomfortable, to be honest with you. But we'll see. Well, I mean, they're slanted tweezers, so they help out a lot because the little tip is a slanted tip. 
and so since we are like going like this then it comes in handy but i think all tweezers are that are like that so i mean it's nothing innovative um i'm honestly not even too sure how i feel about the actual handles themselves which i think is like the more unique part of it i don't know i don't know how i feel about the handles i mean like you know to pay 20 bucks for these tweezers that's that's really what i'm looking into i mean I'm sure that they do the job. They're definitely working on taking out the eyebrows that I don't want there, but is it worth $20? Mm, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know that I would go out of my way and pay $20 for these tweezers, but I mean, they're here and they're here to stay. So <laughs> thanks, Chella. And, um, and then we received this uh, palette from Hank and Henry. This is called the Living in Color palette, and it looks kind of like this. And we have this. These are the colors of the palette. They look really pretty and I did a little swatch test on my IG. These shadows are kind of really cute and they definitely give me spring vibes with these like bright pinks and blues and oranges. They're really cute, pops of color, but also they're not the best at swatching. So I'm kind of interested in seeing how they're gonna translate onto our actual eyes and if it actually look good. This palette retails for $27, so there's that. Last but not least, we got this vintage lip gloss. This lip gloss is in the shade Pink Sequin, and it's kind of really cute, but I haven't opened it. I haven't swatched it, so let's open it up right now and swatch it before we put on our lips. And let's find out the price, too. This lip gloss is $25 on the vintage website. So the little wand is one of those um, like brush ones and the gloss is kind of cute. It's very princessy and it's very clear. You can't see it, but it does have, no, you can't see it at all actually. Oh, it's very kind of a little bit, but it does have a little bit of glitter. It's very small glitter though, so I'm sure it'll look kind of cute. I don't have anything in mind of what I want to do on my eyes, so I'm just going to go with the flow. If it doesn't turn out good, I'm sorry in advance. I'm not the best and I'm not a makeup artist, so <laughs> let's just have fun and let's talk. There's a lot of things that we have to talk about that are very serious. Boo! <laughs> I brought you in just a little bit closer so that you can see what I'm doing to my face. Um, just don't judge, okay? So let's talk. I know that everybody right now is thinking pretty much in the whole world is talking about the outbreak that we have um, with the coronavirus. And let me just start off by saying that I am not an expert, so I hope that nobody takes offense with anything that I say, even especially if it differs from your opinion or the way that you think. But um, to be honest with you, at the beginning, I mean, this has been going on for months, right? And at the beginning, it was very, like, it wasn't hush-hush, but it also wasn't, like, a world terror as it is right now at this moment. And I truly feel like it didn't really get the way that it is now just until a few days ago. I think that once uh, Tom Hanks and the NBA and pretty much all other major sport um, events and things going on with sports got announced and all these like important famous people started talking about how they did get tested positive and all these things started coming out in the news. I feel like the news made it so much bigger in these last few days than it has been in the last few months. And although we have seen and heard over and over that it affects um, mostly immunocompromised people, that still doesn't stop us from freaking out, right? Even if we are in a, a healthy place, if we are young or whatever, like if we don't fall in those ages or in that um, specific category, I still feel like we still freak out about it because it's becoming like now it's a pandemic and now it's being talked about everywhere and we're seeing cases more and more closer and closer to us. But just all these places, you know, advising their citizens to just stay home and avoid social gatherings and not go out if you don't have to and stuff like that. So I feel like because of the media, everybody's just kind of freaking out. And let me tell you something. Uh, at the beginning, like I mentioned, I was not freaking out. I was not worried much because I was like, okay, well, like, it's not like I go out anywhere. Anyway, let's be real. I'm a stay-at-home mom, and when I go out, it's to, like, just distract myself with my girls. But it's not every day. 
and so I thought I was worried more for like my family that have jobs you know that interact with people all the time and have just to be out that they have to be out in the world my husband where his job like depends on meeting new people from all over the world pretty much every day and so that's what started getting me worried a little bit more but not to the point where i was freaking out going to the store and you know doing all these crazy shopping sprees um i think that it wasn't until um maybe about two or three days ago where everything started hitting in the news where they were talking about um like i mentioned all these uh just major events canceling or postponing all these uh, important people coming out just with positive uh, contraction of coronavirus that's really what got me worried more not because I thought that it was gonna come here I mean we literally we live next to the border and so we're literally in two nations all the time we're either in Mexico or in Bronzeville in the United States but we're like jumping back and forth and we get internationals here every single day there's people that live in Mexico that work here in the United States and vice versa the people from the United States that go to Mexico to work every single day so it's nothing new where we're like oh my gosh people from over there are gonna come and infect us over here it's not like it's a thing from one person or the other this this is a worldwide issue so it's not like I was worried about you know like people coming over here and making it worse or whatever what worried me most is that I saw how the news created all these headlines that made people go crazy pretty much and so then I started seeing uh, the day after even just the night where the news broke that Mr. Hanks uh, was positive for coronavirus that everybody just kind of started going haywire with their shopping and I wasn't worried I mean we always buy in bulk um, it's something that I have learned from church for a long time and also for my family you know that you should always be prepared regardless if there's something to be worried about or not I knew that we didn't need water because we always have extra water here at home and toilet paper we buy in bulk uh, napkins for like the kitchen we buy in bulk everything we usually buy in bulk but what worried me most was the fact that people were worried that they were gonna go like out this it felt legit felt like hurricane season this is i mean i live right next to the gulf of mexico and so we are very much in danger when hurricane season comes along every season and so this normally happens in hurricane season especially when there's a tropical storm or a depression or a hurricane that is near our area in the gulf of mexico everybody always goes crazy this is a yearly thing so i wasn't really worried too much about you know like uh preparedness Ooh, girl <laughs> this is pigmented and i was not ready for it um I wasn't really worried about like emergency preparedness in, in that sense, but this is the way it goes. When people start worrying, people start panic shopping, right? When people start panic shopping, people legit go crazy. And then people that are not worried that either they're not working, they're stay at home parents or don't have jobs that require them to be, you know, on a normal basis with a lot of people all the time. Um, those people don't worry right because it's not directly affecting them it becomes more worrisome for the people that don't really care don't really worry when people that are worrying start taking everything from the grocery store this my friends was my case so when all this happened and all these news broke uh, their headlines um, I started by then people on my Facebook and on my social media everybody was talking about how there was nothing in stores there was no water there was no hand sanitizer people were already uh, hyping up and hiking up prices uh, for resale of these products right Amazon where we normally order our bulk items had none and then I uh, I went you know and started searching I was like okay let's see how much toilet paper is we have toilet paper we have a few packs of toilet paper but we're good in that area here in this house but i was like you know what me being me curious and wondering what all this hype was about i was like i know that maybe sam's doesn't have any maybe walmart doesn't have any but i know that amazon always has everything so then i go on amazon and i'm like toilet paper i know i'm gonna find commercial toilet paper at least girl there was no toilet paper not even the tiny 
teeny thin freaking commercial toilet paper that doesn't even clean you there was no toilet paper and so then it hit that's when the real deal hit and i was like okay should i start worrying because like we have toilet paper but what if like El Salvador already went on quarantena, right? And they don't even have any cases in their area and they already had all citizens, you know, stay at home for 40 days. So what if that happens here? What if we go on an emergency, on a state of emergency in the United States and then they end up telling us that we can't leave our house for 40 days too? Do I have enough toilet paper for 40 days? So I'm like, all right, maybe we can make it for half the time but maybe i should buy another pack just in case so then here goes Denise. i'm like maybe they already restocked like sams.com or whatever so let's go on sams so then denise goes to sams <laughs> and there's nothing in sams i was like okay like how much am i willing to pay really i gotta think about this before i start like going crazy and shopping online right so i'm like how much am i realistically willing to pay for a roll of toilet paper I don't need water so I'm not looking for water but maybe I should start thinking about more essentials right so we buy like fruit bars um, these granola things bovitas all things that we can survive on in case of an emergency so then I start shopping for all these things and the things that I couldn't find were definitely the Lysol's the Cloroxes the toilet papers nothing was online everything you had to go in store only so then I'm like all right I call my mom and my mom and I'm like, mom, we need to go to Sam's because I need to go see if they have toilet paper. I don't need it right now, but if people go even crazier after everything that's been announced, I'm gonna wanna get some because there's gonna be none. And she's like, no, pues yo te acompaño, nos vemos a las niñas. My husband was working, this was Friday. This was yesterday, was it Friday? Or maybe two days ago I'm not sure but it was not that long today is Saturday you're gonna see this on Monday but I'm filming this on Saturday so this was just recently so then so yeah so we're like okay you know what it was still early people were still working so we're like okay shouldn't be that crazy so we go to Sam's to see and then when we're like parking and walking out um, of the car into the to the club to the club <laughs> anyway when we're, when we're walking into sam's there's people that are coming out from the exit with toilet paper so i'm like yes we made it we're gonna go get one big bag of toilet paper and we're good because we have some we're good my mom already had some shoes good so we were good so then i'm like we made it just in time so then we go into sam's and i'm like okay so i never buy toilet paper from sam's like i mentioned we always order from amazon amazon didn't have it they filled us so i'm like all right i don't even know where sam's has their toilet paper area but i'm like using my common sense right i'm like okay i've never seen that in this area so then let's go to the other area we go over there and i see a bunch of like things that look like toilet paper so then we're like oh, mami, vamos, I don't know. so then we like start walking a little faster because people are also walking a little faster like the winter texans in the mall on a saturday morning yeah. that's what they were looking like and so then we finally get to the area and then there's like nothing crickets no toilet paper what did i see what i thought was toilet paper was actually in fact not toilet paper what we saw there was paper towels, napkins, right? The rolls. And there was big packs of those. So I'm like, you know what, mom? I, my plan was to go to Target after that. But I'm like, I don't know if Target is gonna have some and I really don't wanna go there. Like, I don't wanna not take it and then not find it anywhere else and then come back and not be anymore so i'm like you know what if worse comes to worse we run out of toilet paper and we can't go out paper towels is what we're going to use to clean our beds <laughs> so then she's like so, bueno, mija, pues algo, algo, lo que sea. so then so this was like a big pack right like the size of my vanity it was i don't know how many rolls but it was a big i mean sam sells big packages so I'm like, all right, we should be good. If we run out of toilet paper, we got napkins, we'll use napkins, it'll hurt our butt. But you know what? At least we have something to clean ourselves with. And that's it, worst comes to worst, we shower. That's it. 
So my mom's like, ¿sabes qué? A lo mejor nos va mejor en el Globo, right? En el Globo, if you guys are from the Valley, if you know Bronzeville, el Globo is like this old, old marketplace that sells everything for super cheap. The building is basically like falling apart, but they still don't remodel it. And people still go, you know, like maybe people from the area. There's never anybody there. It's like one of those grocery stores that's local that people just forget about over the years. This is el Globo. So my parents shop there for their meat all the time. I had not gone there in years, like maybe half of my life. It's been a long time, for sure. And I was like, well, well si ya estoy aquí, pues voy a comprar pues, cosas que faltan, ¿verdad? huevos, leche, cosas así que, que nos hacen falta en la casa, que ya iba a comprar como quiera. So I ended up getting a cart full of like tomate, cebolla, aguacate, things like that. And then I'm like, all right, let me go to the toilet paper aisle. Toilet paper aisle, full, completely full. And I'm like texting my husband. I'm like, ha ha, I made it, right? And then I'm like texting him. I send him a picture of like the aisle completely full. And I'm like, tell your coworkers, this is where they gotta come. There's toilet paper. People are not fighting. Nobody even cares to come in this aisle. There's still a limit of two per person, right? But who cares? Maybe they're a little bit more expensive just a tiny bit but it wasn't outrageous it was just a couple of cents more so i'm like it's worth it it's worth it i'm not gonna go and fight at target risking that i'm not gonna find anything for just a couple of cents less when i have it right here so then i'm like mommy llévese más papel por si acaso yo me llevo un papelito por aquí por allá yeah we got what we need let's go so then uh we go whatever we get home the day's over my husband gets home and i start talking to my husband about you know the things that we found things that uh like how we feel about this whole situation because by this point we still we had been talking about it like laughing at the memes and things like that but we had not really like seriously sat down and talked about the what ifs the plan a's plan b's what happens if this happens what do we do if this happens you know and I can't stress enough. I know that like right now I'm a little bit trying to make it a little bit more lighthearted, but I can't stress enough the importance of having a plan and not just one plan, but having multiple plans in case plan A or plan B don't go the way that, you know, you're planning them to. And um, so we sat down that evening and started talking about, you know what, like we have this and this, we're good here. What are you thinking? What should we do? what do we need to get in case that we can't leave the house for a long period of time you know we made a plan so then i'm gonna get a little bit more in depth in this particular topic that i'm about to talk about in another video that you will see more than likely you're gonna see it after this video so i'm a member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints right and the church that i attend to always always for as long as I have been a member, has always made an emphasis in the importance of preparedness for anything, right? And I'm not saying like the church is like freaked out or paranoid, but it's always good to have a plan, always. And so they always make it a point to uh, teach us about preparedness, like food preparedness, basically just to have your own food storage that you rotate every so often so that you're always prepared for times like these, right? And for the most part, we try to do that. Um, I'm not saying that we're the best and that I follow everything to the T, but we try. We do have food storage that we have had for years. They're still good for more years. And so I wasn't really, I'm not even now, I'm not really worried about if we had food for long term. I was more worried about the consumables, right? Like the toilet paper. <laughs> and even then, not even because like I mentioned, we usually buy in bulk but um this was something that we started talking about and we were you know talking about like okay so what do we do if uh certain things happen like what is our plan what do we do with the girls what do we need to buy what are what do we need to concentrate on so then i started telling him for the for the last few weeks even before this became a hyped up thing i had been like really feeling in my gut that we needed to have uh we needed to be more mindful and more prepared in terms of like having an emergency kit now this part is something that the church always talks about and it's, it's part of our emergency preparedness but this is a part that i wasn't following it's not that something i was obedient to uh until now 
and although like this is very hand handy for any emergency it's usually always talked about during hurricane season in this area right for everybody not just church members but the whole city has an emergency preparedness workshop all the time actually they have multiple workshops to teach citizens to like what you should prepare in a like in, in a backpack in an emergency kit what kinds of things it should have um, who should have it how many you should have things like that right um, and like I said I will go more in depth in another video about this if you're interested but um, it's not something that we were prepared with period I uh, don't have them and I was I have been worried about that for a long time it's been on my mind and then I forget about it and I'm like I'm gonna do it and then I don't so then I go online and I'm like okay you know what everybody's shopping for toilet paper everybody's shopping for germex and all these antibacterials I'm gonna shop for things that nobody's thinking about right now so then I start like doing a Google search on what an emergency kit usually has I went to the church website, tried to find more information as well, and I started online shopping. And up to yesterday, yesterday I finally made my, my buy online, and so that is what I was doing, but that that's really what had been on my mind. And I finally got it done, and I, I'm not done because I feel like we need to have multiples of these kits, and I only made enough for one, but for now I think we'll be okay. Um, but I feel like this whole rush, like this whole stress after that night, um, I felt like me trying to like wind it down, trying to calm down the situation in my head were like just talking to myself saying, you know what? It's not that big of a deal. I think people are just hyping it up. Like the news always makes everything so much bigger than what it really is. And if you're so consumed in social media, so consumed in the news all the time, it gets in your head. And then you see, you go on like Facebook and you go on Instagram and you see all these people on Twitter, you see all these people posting videos, pictures, uh, statuses on how there's nothing left, there's no wipes, there's no diapers, how people are inconsiderate, how people are taking like 40 gallons of milk and just everybody judging, criticizing. And I'm a part of it because I got so frustrated at one point. And I, it's just a human nature to just like, vent out there right they just the need like when something is stressing you to just want to talk about it who to whoever will listen this is why i am doing this video but um i mean it is what it is and it's it's happening and um let me keep doing stuff oh yeah so so i was talking about how like the media and social media kind of just consumes you a lot and how we really shouldn't like let it affect us in the way that i think it was affecting me at one point and i kind of wanted to really take this moment to like really just talk to you and kind of talk to myself at the same time and in calming me down calming you down when it comes to everything all this chaos going on around us and in social media and everything that we're seeing and i know that it becomes scary especially when we're not prepared for the unknown for the what if for the just what will happen tomorrow and why would i do that dad did you just see that i went the top of my eye did i mess up my palm so don't atención well it still looks good actually but i messed up i said anyway um i know that it can get scary when when we're like not prepared and so my point here is to um take advantage of the situation to keep yourself informed in everything that's going on so that's been on my mind and that's what i kind of wanted to relate to you i know that sometimes it's easy for us to just go a step further and further and further and really like dive in and get ourselves really in a deep hole this is not the situation that we should make ourselves get in if you need something if you still feel like you're not prepared then maybe try looking online don't feed into this whole uh panic buying um it's it's not it's not healthy to see other people do it it's not healthy for you to feed into it and for you to do it as well and it's also not healthy for your family especially if you have little kids to see you freaking out like that i don't know look I keep losing my train of thought because I keep like thinking in my head of other things while I'm talking and then I forget <laughs> so sorry but just be mindful that's that's all I'm asking I know that sometimes it's hard and that when you have little kids 
really you would do anything for your family for your children but at the same time like you have to not be selfish and also think about people that other people that might need the same exact things that you do you know so if there's no limit on milk if there's no limit on white bees or diapers and you truly don't need them and you're just going into panic mode thinking well maybe if something happens and i don't have this i can use that and you truly don't need it just think think twice for the sake of the sanity of other people that might need it for that mom that's just gave birth or for that mom that's about to give birth um think for them think for your grandma and your grandpa and the people that have grandmas and grandpas that need items that maybe you're taking way too much of so that's my point of view i feel like i know that it's human nature for us to react sometimes without thinking but i also know that we are better than that and that i think we should all have a consciousness when it comes to being rational in the things that you truly need and the things that you can live without for 40 days or 80 days or however long this might last it's not like the world is going to shut down it will i'm sure it will become worse before it becomes better but the sun will always rise and there's always going to be a better tomorrow so let's hope that there's a solution that there is control to everything that is going on i am truly hoping that soon enough there's going to be a solution that we can all be that we can all use you know and maybe not freak out as much about all of this i hope that if anything comes out of this that we as people are more mindful of the things that we come in contact with that we are more mindful of our sanitation our personal hygiene of how often we wash our hands of how much hand sanitizer we have around the house usually and we use on a daily basis because these are things that you know we should always be doing it's not something that is new it's not something that just you know started being popular yesterday this has been part of everyday life and if anything comes out of this i hope that maybe we can figure out a more and you know what on a side note i hate myself for this because i i like start on a good like train of thought and then i think of something else and i go side noting everywhere and then i forget what i was originally talking about but side note uh, I know that all of you guys who travel or who are subscribed to some sort of store have gotten all these messages from like Ulta, Victoria's Secret, Sephora, all these companies, United, Allegiant, just all these airlines and companies that have sent out emails talking about how uh, they, they are revising their um, hygiene measures and just prevention in um, the spread of the coronavirus and how they have been you know like revising this and implementing these extra measures to keep just their products their testers and their normal like things that they normally do in store how they're making it better for all of us right the, for the to stop the spread of germs basically and in my head when i receive these emails i'm like well you know that's great i'm so glad that you're doing it because we need that but also, like, why do we have to wait till now to revise these measures? Why are we not, you know, like using stronger uh, things to keep your areas better sanitized? So, I don't know. If anything comes, if anything good comes out of this, I think that this, that part, the part where everybody is more aware of what they're touching, who they're handshaking, who they're like how they're cleaning their bodies and how they're sanitizing things i hope that that becomes a more like sought out thing to do a more popular thing to do and that it becomes the new norm cute <laughs> all right so this lip gloss is pretty cute i'm not gonna lie not sticky at all super comfortable on the lips really cute but anyway so let me zoom you out Oh, let me zoom you in actually these shadows are pretty darn good i like it these shadows performed really well i was surprised pleasantly surprised so it's good okay so yeah so anyway so just i hope that from all of this as a society we just become more aware of the things that we do and even the things that we say to people that are not nice um this whole like blaming it on certain people and, and just becoming more like racist and rude and mean 
I, this is sadly where you start like showing your true colors and let's not be that kind of person. Let's be more kind, let's be more generous, more giving, more self-conscious of people that might be in need more than you. If there are things that we are just being extra honestly with, then that's when you should be less, less selfish and more giving. And um, and so yeah, I don't know, that's just the way I think. I might be wrong. Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below how you feel about this, what you think about all of it. And I, I'm interested in knowing what your thoughts are, honestly, because I only have my husband to talk about, my immediate family, and it's a limited circle, right? Yes, I have friends on social media that I'm always like talking to all the time, but also, um, I feel like outside the circle, maybe even outside just the area that I live in, people are living a whole different life. Um, including like, I was just talking to my, my brother, he's in Florida right now, and he's saying that people are like completely normal. Like, nobody even cares. Stores still have full stock on everything. And I'm just like, what? Go get yourself some toilet paper boy. <laughs> but um, I don't know, maybe it's just my area. If you're not from here, even if you are from here, just tell me what you think, what is on your mind, what? What do you think about this whole situation? So I am sending you all my love. I am sending you all these positive vibes. I'm hoping that you and your family and the people that you care and you love stay safe. Truly, um, I feel like things happen for a reason and if we seek guidance, we will have our guidance. And, and yeah. Yeah, let's hope that the situation just gets better. So anyway, send you all my love. Know that you can always talk to me. Reach me on DMs. Find me on IG and message me. I'm always there and I'm always commenting back. I'm always writing back, replying back as soon as I can. So thank you for being here. I hope that it all turns out well for you and your family and those that you love. And I will see you on the next one. Make sure that you are subscribed, that you ring the little bell that is right next to the subscribe button because the next few videos will be a little bit more modified to what I had written on my calendar considering everything that is going on I will be uh, touching on more important topics that you might be very interested in so if you're interested then make sure that you are here every Monday and Friday and find out what the tea is <laughs> so love you guys I'll see you soon my darlings